Today we're going to review the Breitling Avenger Automatic in 43. I'll place some dimensions here on the screen. Talk about the retail price. I have the blue dial on the bracelet. This is an updated model for this year. And I'm really glad that Breitling has updated the Avenger because I think the things that they've done have only enhanced the watch. Uh, and I think more people are going to enjoy the little details here. Breitling in the past, they've been criticized at being too big, too polished, too blingy, and too busy. And with this Avenger Automatic 43, they've definitely addressed that. Uh, it is 43 millimeter, but only 12.3 in overall height, which is awesome when you're considering this has 300 meters of water resistance, uh, screw down crown with double gaskets. It really is a tool watch, but uh, it's nice and thin in profile, which really makes a difference on wrist. My Seamaster that I'm wearing is taller, and I would say that, you know, I do prefer the Seamaster personally, as I know some of you guys do, but uh, there is a lot of good to be said about the way this wears. Paired with the wrist presence and the more understated execution of the dial and the more varied finish when it comes to the execution of the bracelet, the case, and the bezel. So we have a nice mix of high polish, fine satin brushing, found throughout and uh, I think the look is very clean and suits the Avenger to a high degree. You guys can see a blue texture matte finish here, blue on the Rehot or the chapter ring. And I do like the applied markers here, the railroad style. They are polished, they, they do grab light nicely. And then if you go in super close like this, you can notice they almost carry the same textured effect that the dial has and that's fun attention to detail. I also like the fact that everything is clean and balanced here. So we have the Wings logo, the Breitling designation, 1884 chronometer, Avenger, and Swiss made, and that's the only text on the dial. We don't see silly automatic or water resistance designations. I think it's, it's balanced, it's clean, and it's legible. It's still quintessential Breitling when it comes to the design. There is no mistaking this for a Rolex sub or an Omega Seamaster. And I know some people do not like the, the stainless steel fully indexed bezel, but actually I really enjoy what Breitling does here. Does it hold up as well as ceramic or sapphire? Absolutely not, but uh, the look is very clean, very utilitarian, very toolish, very sporty. And I like the fact that there is a secret signature here next to the top where the pip is, the little uh, B, the retro logo, that's always fun to notice. And the construction is robust with screws fixing the bezel to the case and um, the action actually is very pleasant. Each one of these rider tabs makes it easy to grip, especially if you have gloves on, if you're wearing a diving suit, and the luminescent pearl is very dominant too. So how, how is the action? How would it compare to, say, the Seamaster? Seamaster feels looser, maybe even a little bit more play, and a little harder to grip when it comes to the scallops. I think the best in class would be the Tudor Black Bay. There is just no getting around it. Tudor and Rolex, they know how to do a very satisfying bezel. So how does this one stack up? Pretty favorably, not the best, not the worst. Uh, and I enjoy the look, the design language. Let's talk about the movement now. We have the Breitling Caliber 17 in here, which is fancy speak for the 2824 from Eta. This is not a Salita movement. This does have the 25 joules, 38 hour power reserve, four hertz beat frequency, and is very tastefully finished all the way through from the plates to the bridges with a pleasant and uh, sharp execution. It is a chronometer. It will run within that uh, minus four to plus six seconds acceptable daily deviation window and it is certified by the COSC. So it's nice to see that, especially again with the thin nature of the design. I like the knurling on the crown, the two gaskets or the double gaskets in the crown. Uh, overall, it's a tooly watch, but it's still beautiful. And I mean, the light play, the wrist presence, the pop in natural light, there's no denying that this is a sharp watch with original design language. And I really like that as a watch fan. Now let's talk pricing. This retails at $3,750 in this configuration on the bracelet 
with the blue dial. If you opt for the strap version, you're only gonna save 250, so there's not much of a premium between the strap and the bracelet. And so I always recommend buying the bracelet over the strap, and if you wanna add straps at a later date, it's easier to do so, and you're not gonna be spending the type of premium that you would if you had to buy the bracelet separately. So I do enjoy that, and, and while that also reminds me, I know we covered this in the unboxing, but we have a new updated clasp here, which is a, a long overdue, if I'm honest. The clasp was always the Achilles heel in previous generations of the Avenger with really all Breitling clasps. Now we have a flip lock that is seamlessly integrated within the now milled clasp, so it has nicer action, nicer tolerances, and if we open it up, the insides look relatively the same with the clamshell, the polished folding section, the Breitling signature. And if we move it over here, uh, hopefully you guys can see we have five different micro adjustment holes that do not pierce the side walls of the clasp like the older cheap pressed metal versions did. So that's nice to see, but it isn't best in class. I would still say my Seamaster clasp is best in class with... Uh, with the push button, with the sliding micro adjustment system, the dive extension, you won't find that here on the Avenger uh, 43. But what I would love to see Breitling do in the future is maybe put the style of clasp that they do on their rubber straps here on the bracelet, the Pro 3 bracelet, with the push button opening, with the sliding micro adjustment system. Uh, I think that would be a welcome enhancement that we watch fans would really appreciate. So on the whole, how does this stack up to other watches in the price point? I think it's closest to the Black Bay, which is 3,800 retail. That watch will have the better bezel action. It will have, uh, I think, the nicer clasp and bracelet drape. But the thing with that one is it is obnoxiously tall with that in-house movement. Uh, it's likewise a chronometer, but that, that height really gets to you after a while. And that's not something you would experience here with this uh, thin profile on the Avenger 43. My favorite is still the Seamaster, and I'm gonna continue to say that until another watch knocks the socks off of me. But uh, this one, for the right price, is a fantastic addition to any lineup. It's got details, it's got robustness, it has the wear, the pop, the presence, and visually so stunning in natural light. So hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. I appreciate the updates from Breitling, the direction that they're going as a company. It has me uh, hopeful and, and excited about the future releases from this brand. So reach out with questions. Let me know if I missed something or if uh, there's something you would like me to elaborate on that I didn't convey very clearly here in this video. And definitely check out Saltzman's Watches. Contact Richard. Uh, they are an authorized dealer for Breitling for uh, Tag Heuer, for Oris, for a number of uh, more affordable brands as well. And Richard doesn't play games. He'll give you a great quote right off the bat. So if you're shopping Breitling or any of those other brands, definitely uh, give, him a, uh, give him a call, send him an email. His contact information is in the description. So stay tuned for more Breitling content. Uh, I'm gonna be borrowing a Tag Heuer Monaco from Saltzman's. So that unboxing is coming soon. Thanks for watching today, guys, and uh, I'll see you in the next video.